Hey, what's going on everybody? It's 40B Nasty. I'm here to show you how to keep a Dragonette. Whether it be the Spotted, the Aussie Spotted, the Green Mandarin, Red Mandarin, the Ruby Red Scooter Dragonette, or the Red Dragonette, or the regular Scooter Dragonette with Tigger Pods. Now, the thing is, I'll tell you right off the bat, good starting point is with Tisby Pods if you want. Start up your tank with that. But don't do it till your tank is cycled because you're going to put those ticker pods in after so they don't get killed from the ammonia spike in your tank. And then there's also the chance of the phytoplankton. If you have good lights, the phytoplankton can grow in your tank and you might want to worry about that crashing your tank as well because that can die off too. So sure you can get the tizzy pods, that's fine. That's your choice. The cycle pods, I'm going to say you could do which are better as a nutritional value. They're as good as the Tizzy pods, and they're just a little bit less nutritional value as the Ticker pods. The Ticker pods, I'm just going to say 100% go with because that's what I feel good about. And I've been doing a population in two five gallon tanks in the other room, and I'm also been doing, uh, I have four brine shrimp hatcheries for baby brine shrimp, and I'm going to just tell you. This is all a mathematics game, and this is how you win. And this is an awesome, awesome information bit for you to get into with a Dragonette. So if you start off with a Dragonette, you got to know him. The Dragonette itself will eat 500 to 1,500 Tigger Pods in a single day. So now you need to figure out how can I keep that guy happy with that many Tigger Pods in a tank per day. Now I'm doing this to tell you how to do it without um, worrying about a population growing in your tank. I'm doing this with a population outside of the tank. I don't have a refugium or a sump. Yes, you can do it with that. Will it be better? I'm not going to say because I don't know. <laughs> Will it give you a good chance or keep your population growing aside of the population outside your tank? Absolutely it will. So we'll stick to the way I'm doing this and I'm going to show you because most nano tanks, you're probably not going to want to put a sump or a refugium on it. I'll give you that honest opinion. And back to the math, the Dragonette, you already know how much it eats per day. So if you have a bottle of uh, Reef Nutrition that comes with 2,000 Tigger Pods, cut that in half. Say half of that is 1,000 females. Now you need to know the math of the actual Tigger Pod itself. The Tigger Pod itself can reproduce 10 times in its life cycle. And each time it reproduces, it can have a clutch of 30 eggs. So if you have one Tigger Pod with a full life cycle, that's 300 Tigger Pods it can reproduce with larvae. Okay? Now when they also are uh, re in reproduction mode, they can actually only, they only need to be inseminated once. They can actually store the semen of a male tigger pod and then they're all set you don't have to worry about them again now the thing is is I want you to do the math on how many tigger pods you can actually have in a tank in those simple little five gallons they say if you have a thousand and then they happen to live their full lifespan so now you're at time 10 for the reproduction and then also the uh, 30 times I mean, a 30 larvae, it can hold in a clutch. Now you're up to 300,000 eggs just in that one single bottle you can get going in a full lifespan. I don't know how long the lifespan is. It might be like 90 days. So three months, you figure you could actually have a population of 300,000 Tigger Pods. You have two tanks. Now you have 600,000. Plenty of Tigger Pods. And this is great because now you can actually figure out what the math is for your fish now. So... You want to add and subtract who is eating them. So I have that mandarin, say, I'll put them at the benchmark at 1,500. And um, then you have the wrasse. He'll probably eat a little. He's For some reason, he doesn't really eat them that much. And then I have my flame angel. He likes eating probably about half of them. Well, I should have probably started my benchmark at like uh, 500, just to be more realistic, because I'm still on the low end for the amount of tick pods that I put in my tank per week. And the other thing I want to mention too is per when before I even go and putting ticker pods in per week, I siphon out my tank because I have green hair algae. So when I get down to the dirty work, 
I'm on the, uh, that siphon hose is all over this rock work and I'm probably pulling some out too so I gotta minus that so that means when you go to put them in make sure you already did a water change and then you're adding more in instead of just putting 5,000 in then sucking them all back out you know <laughs> that's just not a bright thing to do so now if you take um, a population that you throw in of the tigger pods that you've harvested of say 5,000 you divide that by seven days so you know what this guy eats per day and now that leaves you around like 714 tigger pods for him to eat per day for a whole week now you also got to add in the fish that do eat them as well and subtract for the amount that he's going to get a chance to eat so I'm at around like 250 okay for him to get a chance to eat per day and on a weekly basis and now I have my brine shrimp factories that are the hatcheries that are in the other room as well I got four of them I can pull a thousand of those three times per hatchery so I do one hatchery pull every day of a thousand with the turkey baster and it is one fluid ounce total and I fill that up with the turkey baster I mean I filled that with the brine shrimp all the way up to here and there's a huge population I'm telling you there's got to be at least a thousand in there so I pour those down that Paul B version see that um, rigid tubing right there you can see that in some of my other videos that's how I take care of adding to the population because I know these guys don't eat those little baby brine shrimp he takes care of those so now I put a thousand in there and I've taken my 250 tigger pods that he gets to eat per day I've had a thousand on top of that so now I'm at 1250 tigger pods for him to eat per day and I know I'm putting a thousand in there for him so I don't ever have to worry now if you want to get him to eating frozens this is where it gets good folks because we all want to know how to do this and this is your best chance of manipulating them, you could say. <laughs> so what you do is you take your, you have your brine shrimp and he's getting the taste of that in those Paul B feeders. Okay, you can even squirt some into the tank. It's not gonna hurt your tank. He's gonna find it sooner or later or your corals are going to. So it's a win-win with that. So you're feeding your corals live food, it's nutritional. But you also have your tigger pods and this is great so now I want to get my hatcheries up to doing 10,000 pulls um, from the two tanks so I can pull 5,000 from each tank I never have to worry about the population again now I'm looking at feeding my uh, my uh, dragonette 1300 plus tigger pods per day that will be stocked in there and that'll be awesome. I'll be almost at the max benchmark of never having to worry about it ever again. And I'll tell you what, doing those hatcheries, the brine shrimp hatcheries, and also doing the uh, tigger pod colonies, it's easy. And what I was going to say about getting him at the Frozens, I'm sorry I got sidetracked. Um, I have him with the taste of brine shrimp. Now, with the tigger pods, I, have, I am feeding them only spirulina powder that I had picked up at an organic store so now he has the taste of those two things and he knows what brine shrimp are he knows the taste of spirulina and now I go and buy frozen's and now he's got those two tastes palatable and that he knows of and he sees that flowing by bam that's how it worked for me he saw it I went out and thought some more out put some in there cut the flow off as soon as you see him actually making any interest, go slowly with him, press a little bit next to him, and then hopefully he goes after it. If not, there's another day, because you don't want to ever expect these things to eat frozen ones when you buy them. And if you get them in that situation where they do start eating bro um, the frozen brines, well, you can actually get him into eating mice too as well. And what you do is give it like a few weeks of getting him to know the brine and the spirulina. Um, and then mix in a little bit of the mysa shrimp into the mix about two weeks later. Trick them. And that's what I did. And it worked for me. And the guy's a fatty. And a lot of the mandarins that I see out there, I, I never see them the way mine are. I had a spotted mandarin. That thing was fat. It had no skeletal line down the middle. 
this guy is the same way. He started off like that. I took care of him. Got him fat. He's plump. He's eating everywhere. You can see him right there. He's pecking away. away. And I haven't put any pods in since last Thursday. So, as you know, this works. I'm showing you. It works. He's fat. You can see from my other videos. Check him out. This is great information that I feel has been missed in the whole World Wide Web for some reason. Like, just figuring out the math of it. That's your key factor. If you figure that out, you will have success. This is 40B Nasty out. Take care.